Good morning, everybody. Let's have our Sunday school lesson for February 7th, 2021. We're going to be discussing how prayer draws us closer to God. Now, we won't be reading all these scriptures, but what we're discussing comes from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 5 and verses 21 through 26. Now, this passage comes from a place in the Bible where Jesus is praying for his disciples before he is arrested and crucified. Our electronic devices control too much of our lives. We need more personal interaction with God and each other. Truly knowing God requires a serious investment of your time time in the Word, time in prayer. Knowing each other also requires special time invested. Jesus taught his disciples to pray and he gave us examples of prayer and model prayer through his own life. Jesus commanded prayer. Prayer is not an option, nor should it ever be anything we want to avoid. A Christian desires prayer. In the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus praise for his disciples and praise for us. Jesus calls upon his Father in heaven, glorify your Son. Now Jesus' glory was not just his power being in the heavenly realms and in the great brilliance of his presence. His glory, especially as described in the Gospel of John, was also about the cross and his suffering. Remember, we exist not for our own glory, but for God's glory. Jesus the Son gives eternal life. The Greek word in the Gospel of John is zoe. That means vitality, not just life that is surviving and just getting by, but a life that is very vibrant, energetic, doesn't wear out. In this passage, we see a balanced equation. Eternal life is knowing God. Knowing God is eternal life. In your prayers and in your actions, give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Honor Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection. Honor his ascension, his continuing presence in heaven and on earth, and rejoice in the expectation of his return. In this passage, we see that Jesus prayed that we would be one with him and the Father. Jesus prayed that his disciples, the church, would be united. Now the true church of Jesus Christ is made up of all those who truly believe in him and his word and do his will. And I'm sure it breaks his heart to see the lack of unity that exists in the body of Christ today. The more we pray to him, the more we pray with each other, the more we all get into the word and truly live by it, then the more united we will be. Another thing that will unite us is being in service together for the common good. Jesus prayed that the world would see our love. Our love must be visible. They would see our unity and be drawn to us. The world will not be drawn to a church that is not united and does not show love. The only glory that you and I have right now is our service to him and our suffering that may come as a consequence of our service. But one day we will shine with Jesus. It's important for us to find Jesus 
and having found him, to continually be where he is. And prayer helps us to attain that. Whether it's the quiet place where we pray, or the suffering of the cross, or the glory of heaven, and whatever it is he has for us to do until then, we need to be where Jesus is. Sadly and profoundly, Jesus says in this prayer, Father, the world has not known you. This reminds me of one of the first things Pharaoh said to Moses, Who is the Lord that I should obey him? Since there is so little true knowledge of God or um, outright rebellion and disregard for God, it's more important than ever that God's children declare his name. Let the love of God dwell inside of you and shine forth. Pray for God's love to be known and experienced. Remember, to be able to love like Jesus, we have to strengthen our relationship with him. Lord, help us to truly be united with you and to show your love. This has been another Cold Day production. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am.